Hi there, my name is Isaac Oster, and in this tutorial series, we're going to talk about ZBrush at an introductory level. The assumption is that you uh, do not have any previous experience with ZBrush, so this will get you going on the basics of, of how to use subdivisions and sculpting brushes and masking and, and several other things that are very useful at a fundamental level. So the first thing that we need to do is update the user interface. It's very easy to customize a user interface, but the way that it's set up by default has a lot of stuff exposed that we don't really need. And it hides a lot of useful stuff in these menus here where we have to go and hunt for it. So just to make it as easy as possible for folks that are new, I've got a, a custom user interface that we'll install as well as a few files that I think are useful. So the place where we're going to find those files to install is either on my website, which is isaacoaster.com, and then it's going to be here under tutorials and it'll be the first link. So currently this is set to the course number uh, for, for my introductory ZBrush class, but I'm just probably going to change this so it's it's clear to folks coming from the outside world what that uh, what that means. And uh, you may also find the same files linked in the description if you're watching this on YouTube. It'll just be in the description below. So what we're going to do is we're just going to click on the first link here. And the page that is about to draw in will look a little bit different, most likely. I'm doing a little bit of a revamp. This is my existing introductory uh, content, and I'm, I'm going to up update it. So anyway, there's a bunch of hotkeys here, and uh, you may find that to be useful as well. But uh, for now, we're just going to click on the ZBrush resources link, which will take us to a, a download for, uh, for Dropbox. And we're just going to go ahead and click on the download button. And once, let me scoot this up just a little bit, once it's downloaded, we can take a look. So we'll go to show in folder. You can just right click. You need a program called 7-Zip which you can get for free. And I believe it's available for Mac. It's definitely available for PC. So we'll just go to 7-Zip and then open archive. And once the archive is opened, you should see something that looks like this. So we've got a folder called materials, a folder called LH, that's for left hand, and a folder called brushes, and then some files. So I'm just gonna put these all on a folder on my desktop. We'll just do a drag and drop. And now I need to put them into some specific locations. All this information is available here if you just double click on the install instructions. So you don't have to write this stuff down. The only thing that's going to change is the version of ZBrush that you happen to be using. In this case, this is actually pretty old, but the, uh, the location is exactly the same. So what we're going to do is we're going to go find C program files, pixel logic. And if you happen to be using a Mac, I think it's like uh, program files and then you'll see ZBrush. It's not gonna, it's not necessarily gonna be called pixel logic, but pixel logic is the company that makes ZBrush. So if you see that, then that's a, a clue that you're on the right track. So we're going to open the C drive and navigate over to the correct uh, install. At this point, we're, we're ZBrush 2021. Uh, who knows where it'll be by the time you're watching this. But anyway, um, yeah, so once we're in here, there's going to be a bunch of folders and stuff. And what we're going to do is we're going to go find the one called Z Startup. Z Startup is where you put anything that you want ZBrush to load in by default when it when it fires up. So in order for it to be available for, for our default settings, we need to have stuff saved here in Z Startup. So the first thing we're going to do is go to Brush Presets. And you can see I've got all kinds of brushes in here, but you don't really need them. We're just going to go to brushes and you'll just basically select these guys and then drag them into this folder. So again, that's going to be from ZBrush resources brushes to Z startup brush presets. Very important that you're in the Z startup folder. If you just look here, there's also going to be brushes right there. We don't really want to mess with that. This is all happening inside of Z startup. So once you got your brushes, the next thing that we want to do is go to materials, which will be here. And then you'll just drag the custom mat 04 into your materials folder. Again, I have got a lot of things. You probably won't have that much in there. Uh, and then we're ready to restart ZBrush. So once you've, I've already got these files installed, uh, obviously, so I'm not going to restart ZBrush. But once that's done, 
you can save your there's some other files here this this uh, custom user interface uh, for our eight I, I may change the version number it will not matter at all for your version of ZBrush most likely uh, so you can use this one if I don't uh, update the name but the .cfg file that's going to be our user interface so we're going to go to preferences and then load UI and then you're going to want to go over and basically find Z startup or wherever you saved it. I guess I saved it on the desktop. So you'll just go grab that file, that user interface file. You can see right there, it's uh, set the uh, .cfg. And when you do, you will see something that looks a little bit more like this. So I'm right-handed. So all of my stuff is over here. So I don't want to have to be like reaching across the application all, all day long to find stuff. Every now and again, I will expand this and throw a tool in there if I'm just going to use it for, or a menu in there if I'm just going to use it temporarily. But I like to have as much space available as possible. The LH in here, that's left-handed. So basically that's going to be the exact same thing, but just for a left-handed artist. So if you happen to be left-handed, then you would install that version instead. So the other thing that we want to do is we want to go to document and open. And then you want to load your startup document. And what that should do is it should expand your workspace all the way out so that you don't have any uh, dead space. And it'll also, uh, I think it should get rid of the gradient. If for some reason it doesn't do that, this is assuming you haven't accidentally like drawn a star or something, you go to document and then right here, range, you want to take that. You can see we get that, that gradient in the background. I find the black outline to be dis, uh, distracting or the black background because it kind of interferes sometimes with, with seeing uh, where the geometry is if the material happens to go uh, dark at the at the um, glancing angles and then the other thing you want to do is just make sure that you don't have any dead space right so like if I hit half there what you can see is this is all now space that I can't use there's no reason for that so just make sure you don't have any empty space that you can't work on and you may just have to hit uh, double here and it'll ask you to resize and you'll be good to go so I think that should set up your your user interface. Once that's all set up, you want to go to document and then save as startup doc, and that'll save your settings for your startup doc. And then go to preferences, config, and then store config. And that'll make it so that the next time you open ZBrush, it should look like this, except you will probably see potentially a different material in here. The one that I prefer for my students to use is this custom auto for, uh, just because I think it has a, uh, makes it easy to see forms, some of these materials can be a little bit uh, a little fancy and potentially distracting so that should get you set up with ZBrush uh, and the next video we'll talk about how to start working with geometry